Hey guys, welcome back to Sunday Sermon with Ola. Still here, somehow. Um, yo, I'm actually, I'm kind of proud of myself, you know. I'm, every every time I turn the mic on, I set the lights up and everything, I'm proud of myself because it's so easy to give up. But that's partly to do with what we're going to talk about today. Um, but before we get into that, this week's been dope. Um, I, I had a... Uh, I mentioned it before, but I, I I had the talk. I gave a talk at the Romney Street Group. It was online, obviously, because of COVID and the and the nonsense surrounding it. But um, yeah, man, it was an honour, and I think it went fairly well. You know, um, I felt like I was in my element, and, and I felt like people enjoyed it. Um, so that's cool. I did record it, and um, I will be releasing the full talk that I gave. It's about the same length as this um, podcast, but I'm going to be releasing it to my Patreon supporters, to all my patrons. So if you would like to get that post when it drops, um, it's basically ready. I'm going to drop it soon. Um, I'm just giving you one last chance. If you want to see it, join my Patreon Um, from as little as three pounds. You can choose to pay more a month, but from as little as three pounds, you can get involved and um i would really appreciate if you value the work that i do by saying look i want to put some money where my mouth is i'd really appreciate that and to the 18 patrons already god bless you all man i appreciate the way in which you value my work now um i also want to thank everybody as usual who gets involved with the instagram live uh with the conversation and so on and i think last week was no different from previous weeks in the sense that it was good we had a great conversation and um and i really enjoyed it i think we're getting to a good rhythm with it so thank you to everybody that gets involved uh let's keep going i think we if i remember correctly uh i was kind of keeping score because my my point of view is so originally unpopular um Every time somebody was like, yo, actually, no, that's a fair point. I, I gave myself a point. I think I ended up with like 2-1 up. And I only gave away one point just to be nice. And that was only because Fumi was really giving me back and forth. Um, but shout out to you, Fumi. Shout out to Hashtag Scripture. Showing love always. Um, I appreciate you guys. So, let's get into today's topic, man. Okay. <laughs> so... It's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a hard one because it, it's increasingly personal. And I've already touched on it to a certain extent. If you've listened to the Defund Pornhub um, episode, you would know how I feel about porn. Uh, you know my struggles with it. You know blah, blah, blah. All that kind of stuff. But today I want to give you a secret key to success. It's not even that much of a secret because if you pay attention, you would know it. But it's just my main takeaway from this whole uh, process um, that I went on. So I'd been fighting this one for a while and I had many reasons why and I'm going to give you that in a bit. But essentially, at some point, I decided I am going to take this 90 day challenge. Supposedly, it takes 90 days to form new habits, right? So I was going to take 90 day challenge um, away from porn. Now, I when I, the day I decided to do it, I counted the 90 days so that I could put a marker in my calendar. And it just so turned out that this 90 day challenge would end on my birthday, which was fantastic. It just gave me all that more motivation that like, oh, this is a new season. God's going to do something new in my life. I'm going to be, um, you know, walking into this new age, you know, sort of set free from previous um, entanglements. So I was looking forward to this, like, yo, this is going to be fantastic. But it did. But what I didn't necessarily, I guess, fully appreciate was the journey itself. You know, I was looking so much towards that final date of making that. But the journey itself was fantastic. So I'll tell you a bit about how I got there and and then I'll I'll give you the, the key. So there's this app called Covenant Eyes. 
right? Now, Covenant Eyes is like a monitoring software. It monitors everything going on in your screen. Not just the websites you visit, but just basically what's going on on your screen. They've got some kind of artificial intelligence that can sort of spot when you're looking at porn-like things. And then it will take a screenshot of your screen and send it to somebody that you've set up as an accountability partner. Remember that word. And when... When I was first heard about the idea, I was like, nah. I, to be honest, I didn't really believe in any sort of technological solution because I was like, if you know anything about people when they want something, they'll find a way around it. Yo, I'm telling you, yeah, if you really look hard enough, you find porn anywhere you anywhere you want. Yo, I'm telling you, when you when little boys start watching porn, it doesn't they don't always just go straight to like hardcore websites or whatever it is. Maybe today. But yo, back in the day, you get creative. I mean, before you even realise about page three, yo, if you look at the Argos catalogue the right way, in the paddling pool section where they've got the mum in the bikini, you can turn that into porn if you really want to. Yo, you could, yo, and, and then obviously there's page three and there was the daily sport and that had zero sport in it. Maybe the back page had some sport in it. But yo, that thing was like full of, Topless women. And this was like 30p at the news agents. 50p. This is like, you know, highly available. So porn is like, it comes at you in many different ways, but also it's very easy for you now today if you want to go look for porn, if you want to find porn. Now, obviously there's Instagram. You can you can turn somebody's holiday pictures into porn if you really want to, you know, spend time looking at them in a bikini on the beach. So... I was like, yo, all of these technological solutions, what are they really going to do? They can't do anything for me. So I had always avoided it. Then what happened was, I and this is, this is something I really pay attention to. This is another small key that I just chucked in there, but you, you'll pick it up if you're, if you're sharp. The day before I decided to take the challenge, I was... I was really having a go at my wife. I was laying into her. I was laying into her. I know you're disappointed, Ola. I thought all you do is whisper sweet nothings in her ear and go and get her what she wants. Nah, G. Sometimes I'll be getting up in people's asses because I want to see them do better. I was laying into her about the fact that she doesn't like me laying into her. And I know this is really, really counterintuitive. Like, Ola, why would you keep doing this? But trust me, listen to my heart. Listen to what I'm trying to put across. I know there's many of you that want to counsel me on how to be a better husband. We'll get to that later. But I'm giving you my truth, right? And I'm giving it to you raw as it happened. I was getting into her ass like, yo, you like the reason why you don't let me get in, into your ass and like pulling you up on stuff is because you don't want to be held accountable. You want to you wanna hold everybody else accountable. You don't want to be held accountable. I was getting that, and it was like, you know, them late in the midnight hour, the Holy Spirit starts whispering in your ear. You're like, "Hey, allow me, allow me, leave me, leave me." That's how Holy Spirit started getting in my in my ear. Like, yo, you're talking to her about accountability, and yes, you have sort of accountability on some things, but there's some things you're avoiding accountability on, and that's when obviously. The porn thing came to my head. You know, like, I've struggled with porn. I've had varying degrees of success. I've cut it out of my life and then at some point gone back to it and whatnot. But the one thing I'd always push back on, you know, basically I tried everything. They told me to go and fast. I fasted. They told me to go and pray. I prayed. Read your Bible. Whatever it is. I did all of those and I'd still struggle. But the one thing I would always push back on was that, yo, this software and all of that stuff, like, nah, man, I don't really want to do it. Because I was treating it like it was just software. I was like, I need to go get that software, don't I? I just knew I had to. So the next day when I like went to go and look for it and get it, um, and I'm going to drop a link to it as well in the description box. So um, 
if I don't, remind me. I'll put it in there so you can get the, the, the service I'm talking about. They've got it for your phone. They've got it for your laptops, your computers. It can monitor what you're looking at. And I know some of you, like, uh, you know, I don't want people monitoring what I'm looking at and stuff. And I don't want all of these apps. I understand that. I get it. But, you know, it depends how serious you take what it is you're trying to conquer. So, I, I'm like, yo, I know I need to go and get this service. I need to go and get this app. Now, the thing about this, the, the app is that it doesn't just come in a vacuum. It doesn't just come like, here's an app, like every other app, you just download it. It comes with a whole community and it comes with lots of advice and so on. And that's where I got the idea for the 90 day challenge because they were speaking about how people have freed themselves from, um, from, from, from porn addiction or like, or porn habits and, um, you know, I, I think Covenant Eyes is based on the statement from Job. I think it was Job in the Bible that said, I've, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to set before them any naked maiden or something like that. Basically, I've made an agreement with my eyes not to look at look upon a naked woman. And I got the app and I sat down and I told my wife, look, this is what I'm doing. And I made her the accountability partner. So you put someone's email address in and they get basically a daily report of like, if there's no problematic screenshots, um, it will just send the email saying, you know, there's nothing to be concerned about. Like it seems to be using the phone fine. And if there's something that could be, you know, seen as maybe pornographic, it sends them a screenshot and then, and it's blurred. Uh, just so that you're not sending any of your information to people, and then if it if you can from the blurry image, it looks kind of pornographic. You can deblur it a certain amount more, such that you can't see any text or anything, but like you could see what the image would be a bit clearer, and then they can basically obviously hold you accountable in that sense. So if you've been listening, I've been mentioning the same word time and time again, and that's accountability, and that's the point of the software. I didn't get it. It was a principle. And this is the secret key to success that, yo, is so applicable beyond porn, beyond anything. Look at the areas in your life that you're least accountable in. And these are the areas you are slacking in the most. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it. The areas of your life you are least accountable in are the areas you are slacking in the most. Think about it. Just take a couple seconds. Think about which areas do I like. I, when people try and pull me up, I don't want to hear anything. Nobody knows. I don't report to anybody. Uh, nobody can question me on this. Or when people question me, I get defensive. Like, what's that area in your life? I can guarantee you that's the area you're struggling with the most. Do you know how key accountability is? Accountability is the key. The app, yeah, it's not so much... The thing about the app, yeah, is that I was dealing with it in the basis of, like, you know, filtering software. Because then, all filtering software does is it basically tries to stop you. It tries to put up blocks and rules. And the thing about somebody like me, especially me, I'm a problem solver. I'm going to find a way around it. Yo, bruv, I'm telling you, yeah, from school days, you want to get onto... Some online games and the school's got filter software on it doesn't let you get to games. We found a way to get to those games. We became little mini programmers. <laughs> we, we, yo, we're like, yo, so I just put up the proxy site. Okay, cool. I go through there, translate the page into Spanish. <laughs> you will translate the whole website into Spanish so that you can get into it and get around the filtering software. That's That's what that concept does it doesn't filter in any accountability all it does is it tries to put up laws and rules to stop you and that's the reason why often they say we say things like rules are made to be broken is because that's exactly what our human instinct is someone puts up a rule you just want to break it but what we can't really hold or we can't really stand is when someone holds us accountable i make this joke all the time about i'm doing accountability accountability coaching for women um uh, and and it's a, it's a bit of a joke, but there's some truth to it. And the reason why I say there's some truth to it is because sometimes holding someone accountable doesn't seem loving at the time. Later on, you realize the person holds you accountable 
actually does love you. If they're doing it in a loving way, obviously. But sometimes, somebody holding you accountable doesn't seem like the one that loves you the most. So a lot of guys, in an attempt to seem loving to women, don't hold them accountable. Now, luckily for me, a lot of the women in my life, because I'm married, are friends and sisters, that kind of thing. And I've grown up with three sisters. And they, if the one thing they know is that I'm going to hold them accountable. We're going to have a chat and I'm going to ask you, what did you do in that situation? And I'm going to speak to them about it, not in a case of just, I like to, you know, get in people's asses, but I like, I'm really going to hold you accountable as well for the part that you played. Of course, we can talk about environmental factors. We can talk about what affected you, but what did you do? We're going to talk about it. A lot of men don't like to do that because it's going to make the woman feel like you don't really love them. A lot of the time, it's just easier to say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that happened to you, rather than let's address what you did in this matter. So there's many situations in which I have female friends that would actually, like, they know when they need it. And they'll come to me and be like, look, this is the relationship situation I'm in. What's going on? And I'm going to tell them, look, the way that guy spoke to you, that's wrong, blah, blah, blah. But I also need to ask you, how did it get here? Did you just, did you just literally like, you guys liked each other and then one day he just turned around and said this to you? Or have you built up a culture in that relationship of saying mean things to each other and you've just come to show me this screenshot, for example? Holding people accountable is so key for growth. Some of you have hit a plateau and will not reach the next level in what you're trying to attain because you don't want to be held accountable. Don't confuse accountability for just being mean to people. It's not about that. It's about simply drawing the line between cause and effect and understanding where you have been the cause. And having somebody who can say, look, this is what you did. Why did you do this? Somebody who can question you. Somebody who can tell you what you need to hear rather than what you want to hear. And somebody that you can come back... Do you know how... We're social species. As much as people like to behave, they pretend they're all savage and whatnot today, people like acceptance. That's why they post stuff online. They want to be accepted. And it's like, you can actually use that power for good. You can really, like... When you see people that want to get in shape, joining a group of other people who are trying to get in shape, who are going to hold them accountable... Sometimes it's the key that really pushes them past their previous barriers. I'm not saying you have to tell everybody your business. I'm saying you should have at least somebody in your life who holds you accountable. You should. It makes sense. You know, and, and the, 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 the key of it is that it's using our social nature and our psychology and using it to better your brain rather than using it just to collect likes or whatever it is. I believe it's the same part of your brain, but I believe that there's a way you can use it for real positive good. There's some people do it on social media. They'll be like, I'm going to work out for the next 30 days. Every day I need to post a picture of me working out and that will be the thing that keeps them going because they know 600 people that follow them are waiting for this video of them working out. I remember there was, I think I saw like one page once where it was like a somebody who wanted to like keep their room tidy or like make their bed and every day they post a picture of their bed, bed made. I'm telling you, that's somebody who's going to achieve their goals. This is my sermon for today. Be accountable. Be accountable. This is not the time to be defensive. This is not the time to be comfortable. This is not the time to only hear what you want to hear and to have your emotions stroked. I'm not saying get somebody who's going to beat you up over it. I'm saying get somebody who's going to hold you accountable. In love. In love. That's key. Accountability can only be done by people who love you and care about you. Obviously, there's varying degrees. If it's a PT, they love you because you're paying them. But, like, I'm telling you, in terms of true accountability, it needs to come from a place of love, not judgment. Not somebody who's going to tell you you're trash. Not somebody who's going to tell you that, oh, well, you, you're just dumb or whatever it is and just curse you out. I'm talking about somebody who's going to pull you up and say, why has this not been done? 
even when it's uncomfortable. That's my little key to success. The little small key that I dropped in there, I told you I was getting in my wife's ass about uh, being accountable and then the Holy Spirit now got in my ear like, but have you been accountable? The little key I dropped there is that often, right around the time you're really passionate about getting, like, getting on to someone about something, that's usually the moment you need to stop and ask yourself, be honest with yourself. True self-awareness is key here. To ask yourself, is this an issue for me? Because people project, we all project. If we know that deep down we have a problem with commitment, the first thing we want to do is project that onto other people and start telling them, well, you have a problem with commitment. It really is us. There'll be times where you say, oh, it, you, you're like, this person's so controlling. Whereas if you really deep it, if you really peep the statistics, look at the real facts of it. What you find is that a lot of people that are controlling believe other people are controlling. So they feel the need to control them first. That's all it is. So they project it on other people. They say, oh, this man is so controlling. Whereas the woman's actually controlling the entire situation. It's just easier to go with the narrative that the man is controlling. And that's not to say there aren't men that are controlling. I'm just saying there are times where women are the controlling one in a relationship and will still say the man is controlling. All the facts will say that the woman always gets her way. She decides what goes on. She's the one that's constantly bending his, uh, twisting his arm and getting things done her way. And she'll still say he's controlling because he said to her, you know, oh, I, I prefer it if you didn't do that. Why are you trying to control me? It's inside her. That's the small key I dropped in there. The big key though, accountability. Because what that woman could do in that situation is go to somebody who can hold her accountable and say, look, I feel like my husband's controlling, but he always says that I'm the one who's controlling. And then the person might ask her, well, what did you, he do that you think is controlling? He asked me not to put my socks in or on the table. Okay, he made a request. Why is that controlling? Because I don't want anyone bringing that up. Okay, why do you say you're controlling? Because he didn't really want to, you know, go on holiday this year, but I wanted to go on holiday, so we went on holiday. Okay, so that's a clear situation in which you've got your way. Yeah, but he agreed to it. Okay, but did he agree to it willingly? No. And then you can ask those questions, go back and forth, and start. someone can help you unpick, and you can listen to somebody that might say, no, nah, really, you're the problem. Not to say that's the end of it, you're the problem, therefore you're a terrible person, and blah, blah, blah. No, but you're the problem, so we know where to fix this. You're never going to fix a problem you can't diagnose properly. So I hope you guys receive that in love. If you want to hit the next level in something, get accountable. It's very easy, it's very you know obvious to just say, I'll get a mentor and so on. But a lot of people don't even really consider what that is. Get somebody who's going to ask you, what is going on in this area? There's still areas I need more accountability in. I volunteer myself for accountability because I know it's going to help me grow. Yo, I said to you guys from the jump, I want to make sure this thing is consistent. Part of the reason, you know how many weeks I've, I would have thought to myself, all right, let me let it slide for this week, man. I've been tired. You remember the episode that I did? I think it was the defund Pornhub one. I can't remember. But one of the episodes I did where my eyes are red and, and I'm, I'm almost slurring my speech. I'm like repeating words and whatnot. It's falling apart that week. But because I said, I want to be consistent in this thing and I've already put it out there, I was like, nah, I can't slack on this one. Everyone who listens to this podcast knows I need to be consistent. It needs to come out weekly. Every Sunday, Sunday sermon. Go, Ola. Obviously within reason. But like, you can't just trip up on episode five because you, now you're tired. That's how podcasts die. So take this from me. I'm not saying, I'm not giving you medicine that I haven't taken myself. Take this from me. Any area that you're struggling in right now, you're falling behind, ask yourself, 
how have I been accountable in this area? There's other keys to success. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying to you that accountability is a big one. And it's one that we constantly try and remove because it makes us uncomfortable. And everyone's kind of got a can't nobody tell me nothing approach to life right now. Everybody wants to seem like they got it all together by themselves. Everybody wants to seem like they're killing it. They don't want to share the source. They don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want everybody's just in their own lane doing their own thing. It's a lie. Accountability. Yo, I get in other comedians' situations as well. Like, bro, you said you were going to shoot this. Where is it? And they appreciate it. Bible says, correct a wise man and he'll thank you. Correct a fool, they'll despise you forever. Don't be a fool about this. Be wise. Get somebody who can correct you. I'm telling you. Every time you start getting to that yes man category, you're on your way out, man. All right. Stay blessed, guys.